Hello, so I'm here today thanks to Dogs Music with the first in a series of videos of practice tips for saxophonists. And today I'm going to be talking about how to play fast on the saxophone. Um, so this is something almost everyone wants to be able to do, um, but most people find there comes a point where they simply can't play any faster um, or they find they start getting an unevenness as they're playing. So I'm just going to show you a few little tips for when you're practicing to help you um, be able to play really fast and really smooth. So an interesting thing to think about is most people know that you can play faster, for example, on a flute or piccolo than you could on a baritone saxophone. Um, but we don't often think about why that is. Um, and it's actually to do with the fact on something like a flute or a piccolo, um, the keys don't move very far at all. They're only going a tiny distance. Whereas on a baritone saxophone, there's actually a bigger physical distance that the key has to move before shutting. So although we know the baritone sax has a bigger distance um, than the flute, we still need to take advantage of this kind of when we're practicing and try and minimize the distance um, our fingers are traveling whatever instrument we're playing. And one of the biggest problems that saxophone players have is when they play their fingers will come off a, a long way off the key. Then when you go and try and play fast not only have your fingers got to close the key but they've also got to kind of come back onto the key first before they start closing them. So it's all too common to see people playing a bit like this going kind of, You see my fingers are kind of miles off the key where if you can keep them really close to the keys more like this and hopefully you can see there my fingers are on the keys all the time and that's going to make it a lot faster when we come to play faster um, now a good way of practicing that is actually if you get um, a little bit of blue tack and put a tiny bit of blue tack on each of your keys um, then you'll be able to feel, it won't keep your fingers on the keys, um, but you'll be able to feel when they lift off and it'll make you really aware of just how much your fingers are lifting off the keys. Now, once we've got used to keeping the fingers on the keys, um, there are a few other tips and tricks um, for practicing specific pieces um, and specific bits of music. And as an example today, I'm going to use a piece called Devil's Brew, um, which is number 36 from 36 More Modern Studies by James Ray. And this is a popular piece on the grade eight uh, saxophone syllabus that lots of people play for their grade eight exams. So I thought it'd be a good example to use. Um, and this piece is quite fast and quite tricky in terms of the fingerings involved in it. So there are a few ways I'd go about practicing something like this. First of all, I'd slow it right down. I'd never dive in at full speed. Um, I'd probably take this one about half speed to start off. Um, and play it through really slowly. But as you're doing it, make sure the fingers stay really close to the keys and also stay relaxed. So you get something like. Or you can start even slower than that if you want um, to get going with. But hopefully if you like, you can see my fingers stay fairly close to the keys. The other thing that's important is my fingers stayed really relaxed. What happens if you try and play fast, often your fingers tense up um, and then things become even and you just can't play any faster. And what I would do is start at a slow speed like that, gradually, gradually increase the speed. Um, it's good to do this with a metronome, but every time you increase the speed, make sure your fingers stay relaxed. As soon as they start tensing, slow it back down again, keep those fingers relaxed. So as well as approaching it like that, um, I also like to do something called practicing in groups, which is where we take the music um, and we split it into little chunks. Um, now in this piece, because it's in 6-8, um, a good way to do it is in groups of three. Um, and the way I would practice this, I'd play the first three notes and then I'd play one extra note going on to the next group of three as well. Then I'd do the same thing starting on that note. Um, it's easier to demonstrate if I play, so you get... <laughs> And 
what that does is it gets you really good at joining up each of those groups of three, but it also goes one note further so that when we put it all together, it makes it a little bit easier to join the whole thing. Um, and having those breaks just gives your brain and your fingers a chance to kind of reset, um, which means you're not going to kind of be playing and keep stopping and things. Um, it just gives you that little bit more thinking time. Once you've done it in groups of three, I like to do it um, in gradually more complicated groups. Um, because I know that if I can play it in complicated groupings, when I come to play it normally, it's the easiest thing in the world. Um, so I might start off by doing groups of four, which is slightly weird in this piece. Then you could do groups of five. Then six is a bit more normal in this piece. And I always think if I can play things in groups of seven, then I should be able to play it fine normally. So in seven you'd get... Then when I come to put it back together normally, it should be nice and fluent, this. So that's a little trick of practicing um, in groups like that. Another way um, people often do, which is a great way to do it, is play it all swung and then play it reverse swung. So you're kind of changing how close all the notes are to each other. So you get really good at joining the notes. It's kind of... And the opposite way around. So things so you hear that swung and reverse swung. And again, when you put it all together, that... It just kind of has an ease and a fluidity to it. So there are a couple of tricks um, for how you can practice playing fast. And all the time, just remember to make sure that the fingers are relaxed and staying close to their keys. Um, if you are working on this piece, Devil's Brew, um, then there is a full recording of this piece available on my YouTube channel, Saxophone Resources. Um, if you're a sax or clarinet player, it's worth checking out. There's about five or six hundred odd videos on there which are mostly kind of recordings of all the pieces to the grade syllabus and there are some play along piano parts and things on there as well. Um, so hopefully they'll be useful for you. Um, we'll put a link in the video description. But anyway, thanks for joining us today. Um, I hope those practice tips have been helpful um, and soon you'll be playing as fast as you like with no problems.